at 10 covering the entire DMV. Here's what's ahead on DC News now. A top aide to DC Mayor Muriel Bowser back in hot water tonight. Just wanted to see if there's any sort of statement from you regarding what happened with Chris Rodriguez. No. We are breaking down the dramatic new allegations filed in court as a high ranking official could face new legal troubles. And a smoky scene in Loudoun County. New video shows the aftermath of a fire there, but we know at this hour. And breaking tonight, local baseball legend Steven Strasburg retires. The former World Series MVP saying goodbye to the game. Oh no, he takes down George. It's revenge. Plus, Stumpy's last stand. He is not going down without a fight. How the axe swinging tree fared in a race with the racing presidents tonight at Nats Park. Plus, an out of this world experience on its way to our backyard. Our people are planning ahead for Monday's extraterrestrial eclipse. Scott? Yeah, absolutely. That's got on the forefront of our minds. And we'll talk about that coming up. But I also want to talk about our weather for Sunday. That's all looking pretty bright as well. Coming up in just a few minutes. All is calm, all is bright. Thank you, Scott. Good evening. And thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 10 on CW. I'm Ben Dennis. And I'm Randy Bass. Thanks for spending your evening with us. We jump right back into breaking news tonight. The Washington Nationals 2019 World Series MVP, Steven Strasburg, officially retiring from baseball. MLB Transactions lists him as retired, and Mazin reporter Mark Zuckerman reports the team and their former ace have come to terms on a retirement agreement both sides are happy with. Strasburg has not pitched for the team since 2022 after he experienced complications after surgery. And the team had, form, had plans to formally announce his retirement last fall. But according to multiple reports, Strasburg's agent and the team couldn't agree on the financial terms of his contract and the retirement ceremony was canceled last minute. Strasburg set, spent his entire career in D.C. He was their first overall pick back in 2009 and named three All-Star teams. Meantime, there has been no formal announcement by the team. All right, and we get back to your forecast tonight. Earlier today, breezy and sunny on this Saturday. Scott, some of those winds are starting to die down, though. That's true. I yeah. couldn't complain. And Scott, please make it so in the future. No more complaints. <laughs> yeah, that uh, breezy is going to go away for tomorrow. But the sunshine will still look around here. Uh, 57 was the high today. If you missed it, uh, this is the average high, though, 65. So. We're going to be seeing numbers close to the average high as we head in towards a new work week. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, the record high was 92, set back at 1929. Overnight lows are going to drop down and bottom out here in the district to about 40 degrees and then turn the corner and get up into the upper 40s uh, to near 50 degrees as we head towards the noon hour for tomorrow lunchtime. Satellite view here over the last six hours has showed a lot of cloud coverage started to break up. Oh, I would say about two and a, about two hours ago, uh, I would say around eight o'clock or so. Now we're seeing some clear skies in parts of the viewing area. That's leading to a chilly night out ahead of it. Uh, areas in, well, say PG County, you're still seeing some clouds out and about this evening. But don't worry, those clouds will give way to clearer skies. And tomorrow morning, it'll be chilly, but we'll get up to the upper 50s and lower 60s across much of the viewing areas. Our multi-city forecast does show. And the winds, the blue line, uh, well, it's not too windy tomorrow. It'll be under 10 miles an hour for tomorrow. And then as we go into Monday, well, we're, like I said, getting up to around that normal mark for us here Monday afternoon, late afternoon. Now, the solar eclipse is going to be kicking out mid-afternoon. We'll talk about that uh, coming up in, in just a few moments. But uh, in the meantime, enjoy the temperatures that are going to be warming up here because that's what our weather headlines show. Less wind on Sunday, warming up this week. And again, clouds will be around. Will there be a shower on your Monday? We'll stick around for that. Your future cast comes up. Plenty to cover, Scott. Thank you. New tonight, yet another top aide to D.C.'s mayor could find himself in more legal trouble tonight. Assistant City Administrator Chris Rodriguez is now accused of violating a protection order filed by his ex-wife. She says he allegedly entered her home and described concerning statements from him. All this comes just months after he was charged for domestic violence. Those charges, though, were eventually dropped. Our Dave Laval has been working on this story all day for us. He joins us from the newsroom. Dave, you asked the mayor about this very issue at a community event tonight. Well, this is a copy of the civil protection order filed by Chris Rodriguez's now ex-wife. It details a pattern of disturbing behavior, something D.C.'s mayor did not want to discuss earlier this evening. Just wanted to see if there's any sort of statement from you regarding what happened with Chris Rodriguez. No. 
Mayor Muriel Bowser responding to new allegations involving her assistant city administrator. The ex-wife of Chris Rodriguez filed a civil protection order against him April 1st. According to court documents, Rodriguez's ex-wife claims he forced his way into her home in Northwest March 29th. She also claims he entered her bedroom, started shouting and cursing, and refused to leave until police were called. She also claims Rodriguez later called and threatened to take the couple's son and keep their two daughters who were at his apartment at the time. Police said Rodriguez's actions at the home violated an existing temporary protection order as she now seeks a harsher one. Bowser nominated Rodriguez last year to become the lead technology officer for the district. She eventually withdrew his nomination following pressure from the D.C. City Council as previous abuse allegations surfaced involving his now ex-wife. Police arrested Rodriguez, but those charges were later dropped. Rodriguez has not responded to our request to comment about the latest allegations. Neither have council members that we reached out to earlier. As again for Rodriguez, he has a hearing Monday morning regarding the civil protection order. In the newsroom, Dave Laval. DC News Now. David, we appreciate your reporting tonight. Right now, firefighters are investigating a massive fire at a hotel and event space in Loudoun County. It gutted portions of the building in the Aldi area. Take a look at the damage done. This is at the Manor at Cortland Farm. We sent crews to the scene around 10 a.m. When we got there, you could tell smoke still coming out of the roof, several windows broken, water continued to rush down the driveway. No official information yet from Loudoun County officials on exactly what happened or any possible injuries. We will keep you updated. And new details tonight, D.C. police are identifying 45-year-old Marcus Boatwright as the man who died after being stabbed in Northwest D.C. Thursday. Officers found him on Georgia Avenue between Irving Street and Columbia Road with a single stab wound. He died at the scene. If you have any information, police are asking you to give them a call. Tonight, an update on D.C.'s drug-free zone. So far, D.C. police have made at least 15 arrests inside those zones, four in the initial round, two in the second, and nine in the third round. As of yesterday, no arrests had been made in the fourth round of drug-free zones, which began Wednesday. Meantime, the campaign team for U.S. Senate candidate and Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrook says that a field office of theirs was burglarized. The campaign says it happened between Thursday night and Friday morning in Silver Spring. Our Haley Milon spoke with members of her campaign and has more details. I spoke to also Brooks's campaign operations director Gerard Henderson, who says a staffer arrived at the field office on Friday morning and said it seemed like someone had forced their way in. Henderson says the staffer called police and he says campaign promotional items like signs were thrown into the trash. Some personal items appeared rifled through and a notebook with sensitive information about the campaign was reportedly taken. They did take a notebook and you know that notebook contains some very sensitive information about our field operation for the Montgomery County and Western Maryland area. We're all really shaken up. You know, we never thought something like this would happen, but this will not deter us from our May 14th primary. In a statement, also Brooks says, quote, this will not deter us. It only strengthens our resolve to run the kind of uplifting campaign we've been running since day one. The campaign says the office was the only place that was broken into. It's installing security cameras now to enhance security and safety at field offices. And staffers say they're awaiting the completion of the police investigation. Meantime, we have reached out to Montgomery County Police for what they found on scene. We're waiting to hear back. Thanks to Haley tonight. Yes, an update. Dive teams have recovered the body of a third worker killed in the Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. Maynard Suazo Sandoval's body was pulled from the water yesterday. The 38-year-old was a husband and father of two who moved from his home country of Honduras to Maryland nearly two decades ago. He was described by his brother as a hard worker, and a visionary. Suazo Sandoval was one of the six men filling potholes on the bridge when it collapsed last Tuesday. Three of those men are still missing. And this comes as President Joe Biden made a trip to Baltimore yesterday for the first time since visiting the site of the Key Bridge collapse when it fell last week. Today, yesterday rather, he promised Baltimore the federal government would pay for 100% of the cleanup and reconstruction cost of the bridge. It's unclear at this point how much that'll cost. Right now, federal and local authorities are rushing to clear the wreckage blocking the Port of Baltimore. So far, they've opened a temporary channel for smaller vessels. Larger vessels still cannot get through, and thousands of port workers are losing paychecks every day.
Simply put, the impact here has a significant impact everywhere. I'm here to say your nation has your back, and I mean it. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers predicts the port will partially reopen by the end of April. They are aiming to return to full operation by the end of May. Plus, the Baltimore Orioles and Ravens pledging their support to the city. They are donating a combined $10 million. It's going toward the Baltimore Community Foundation's Key Bridge Emergency Fund. It supports families, first responders, port workers, small businesses, and workers to memorialize the tragedy. Developing this evening, five men are in custody and facing felony charges after Fairfax County police say that they tried engaging in sex acts with minors last week. Our Northern Virginia reporter Max Marcilla has the latest. Tonight, police say this is part of an effort to crack down on threats that may not be visible to us, but put some of the most vulnerable community members at risk. During spring break, these cops were hard at work. Detectives with Fairfax County's Child Exploitation Unit were posing as children online, strategically utilizing apps they know predators use, and their four-day undercover operation ended with five arrests. We're absolutely not catching you know, all of them, and I wish we could, um, and that's why we do this job. The five men arrested range in age from 24 to 53. Two are from Baltimore, one from Woodbridge, and the other two from within the county, one from Lorton and the other from Fairfax. Fairfax. We do believe there's underreporting. That admission by Deputy Chief Brooke Wright makes these numbers even more troubling. Last year, the Child Exploitation Unit received an estimated 1,200 tips, issued more than 500 residential search warrants, and nationwide online enticement reports increased by 323% between 2021 and 23. That's according to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The ages of these children and the victims of our cases are getting younger and younger. I think that's just just due to the access they have um, to the internet. Police say parents can play a role in this too, offering these tips. Be open with your child, know their phone password, have access to it, and charge it in your room overnight. Nothing good happens on their phone after eight or nine o'clock when they're supposed to be in bed. One last tip from police. They say check your kid's phone to see if they have a second calculator app because it may not be a calculator. They say in some cases there are apps disguised as one thing that instead could contain a hidden and locked vault that could contain other apps or photos. Reporting in Fairfax, Max Marcilla, DC News Now. Our thanks to Max tonight. Still to come, DC is going to be crowded this weekend. Thousands of runners will be here for the annual Cherry Blossom races. There's a 5K today, 10 miler tomorrow. Time to go to bed, folks. Got to get up for that. Drivers beware of road closures downtown tomorrow around the Tidal Basin. Good news for runners and spectators. Metro opens 5 a.m. tomorrow, two hours early. Oh no, he takes down George. It's revenge. A swing and George a win for Stumpy. DC's most famous cherry tree took on the racing presidents tonight at Nats Park. He's also the mascot for the Cherry Blossom 10 miler tomorrow. The actual Stumpy tree on the south side of the Tidal Basin is set for removal next month as part of a seawall rehab project. The Nationals may not have won tonight's game against the Phillies, but they did. Stumpy came out on top. Ben.